Mike, thanks to you. Thank you for that uh, kind of introduction. Folks, what we're going to do is, like Mike said, we've got a Tesla Model X 2017 here that we're going to do an educational demonstration with. So quickly, before we get started, let's talk about the Tesla Model X. It's a high voltage vehicle. It's a fully electric vehicle, 400 volt floor pan mounted battery. Rescuers need to be familiar with the shutdown procedures for high voltage vehicles before interacting with it at a roadway incident. In addition to the high voltage components, we also have the Falcon Wing doors. The Falcon Wing doors are a lot like Gold Wing doors. They open out and up over top of Model X. This makes for great movement for the occupants in and out of the vehicle. And for us as rescuers, it creates a great access point for us to get access to the occupants of the vehicle in a crash. The Tesla Model X is made of almost completely aluminum. So it's going to behave differently with our extrication equipment than we see in our conventional steel bit. The B pillar of Model X is an exception to the aluminum construction. We have two layers of dual phase 980 steel and a boron rod that runs from just below the latch up into the roof rail. So Model X is equipped with one of the strongest B pillars on the roadway. The A pillar has a boron rod inside of several layers of aluminum. Again, an extremely strong area that could challenge power rescue tools at our extrication assignment. What the guys are going to do today is they're going to complete a total sidewall removal, including both doors, the front conventional door and the falcon wing door. Then they're going to move on to dash displacement, and then at the end, they're going to cut that ultra high strength steel B pillar and remove it completely from the vehicle. Before we cut them loose and have them start cutting on the vehicle, I want to thank Tesla Motors, because Tesla Motors has donated these vehicles for these demonstrations, and they've also really spearheaded first responder relations as far as auto manufacturers go. We've created several videos that train rescuers with Tesla Motors, and they've done an amazing job with their ERG work and keeping all of that updated for all of you. So they've done a fantastic job. Today we have Mike McConnell with us here. This is Mike McConnell with Tesla Motors. He's come all the way out from San Francisco, Fremont, California, to be with us. When we get done with this instructional demonstration, if you have any questions that are Tesla specific, definitely direct them at Mike. He's here to help. I'll also stick around for a bit after this demonstration. And of course, Hearst is available to answer any questions regarding the equipment that you see used here today or anything else in the booth. So, I appreciate you all coming out. For those of you who are viewing this on our Facebook live feed, we appreciate you being with us. And we'll have the guys get started removing the front door of Model X. We're going to start with a vertical crush modification. The idea here is to gather a purchase point in the vehicle so that they can get down to that latch, like we do with our traditional conventional vehicles, to get the front door off of the vehicle. The latch system and the hinging on Model X is what we're used to seeing with conventional vehicles. The difference is, and you're going to notice, that it's aluminum construction on the skin and most of the body structure. So what we have there is not your traditional ripping and tearing with the steel. We're going to see a lot more breaking of the aluminum. The doors on Model X, the front doors, cannot be opened without 12 volt power from the outside. So that could create a unique situation for us. There's no mechanical linkage. But like all vehicles that have electric door latches on the outside, Model X is equipped with mechanical linkage on the inside. As a rescuer, we can reach inside and utilize the inner door handle to utilize that mechanical linkage. So a quick, easy removal of the front door. The falcon wing door is a little bit different. You can see on the other side that they've actually separated the door in two. That's what we're doing here on the driver's side of the vehicle now. 
The Falcon Wing door opens out and up. It's a two-piece door that's hinged in the middle. What we're trying to do is we're trying to separate those two pieces of door. We leave the top in place because it's not in our way with this scenario. And then the bottom, once broken free of the top piece of door, can be removed like a conventional door. Because the aluminum tends to break under pressure, we're utilizing the spreaders to break that top door sill away from the lower door sill. This can also be accomplished by using a hydraulic cutter or a sawzall even with the Falcon Wing door. Larry's finishing up the cuts to remove that lower section of door from the upper section of door. Notice the sound the aluminum makes. It's different than what you're used to hearing with our conventional steel construction. Aluminum, again, it, it doesn't tend to cut like our steel does. Instead, it breaks. So that's the cracking noises that you're hearing when they're cutting through this or they're breaking it with the spreaders. The top section of the Falcon Wing door is a high tension spring. So that top section of the door has a tendency to fly open when we separate it from the bottom. That's why Tim maintained control of that top section of door so that it didn't break free and create a hazard for the rescuers as they, as they separated the two pieces of the door. As Tim lays the door down, take a look at the airbag in the door. We have a 6,000 PSI inflation cylinder there. That acts as the curtain bag. A single latch holds the falcon wing door down in the center bottom of the door. At this point, the guys are going to move forward, and they're going to start removing that fender so that we can accomplish our dash displacement evolution. Again, not your typical construction. We have aluminum on the hinges and the hood skin or the hood lid. So it's not really what we're used to. And what you'll see with the fender is as it's being removed, it behaves differently than our steel construction. Oftentimes, the sheet metal on an aluminum body structure vehicle will break rather than bend out of the way. As you can see, the way that peeled down, that's a little different than what we're used to seeing with our steel construction. It's so important with our aluminum body structure vehicles, whether it's a Tesla or any of the other many manufacturers now that are using the aluminum structure, it's so important that we clear this material away, that we make appropriate release cuts so that when we do do our dash lift or jacking the dash or pushing the dash evolution, that we have our good release cuts so we get good movement. If we don't accomplish that, what can happen is that when we push on the lower A pillar, rather than it gathering material and being pushed out of the way, it can actually break off, rendering our dash displacement ineffective. Here you can see that the guys chose to break that structure away. It's very different than we're used to seeing. That was a bar that's attached from the firewall to the strut tower. We're not used to seeing that attachment to vehicles, but because of the aluminum body structure, that, that's been put in place. Again, we can cut it, or with aluminum, we can often break it. Here's the final cut in the upper rail strut tower area. This is the final release cut. This cut eliminates the connection between the upper rail and the strut tower on the windshield side of the Model X. From here, Larry's going to move up to the, to the A pillar in the windshield area of the Model X. There's two curtain airbags in the Tesla Model X. One is located in the A, A pillar in the windshield area, and we have an inflation cylinder close to the dashboard there. He's gonna check for that inflation cylinder now and avoid it with his cut. The second curtain bag deploys up and out of the Falcon Wing door. 
it acts as a curtain airbag, but it deploys from the door because there's no room in a roof rail there to enclose that airbag. A double cut in the A pillar ensures that we have good movement and we have no resistance when we go to push that dashboard. There's nothing for that A pillar to get hung up on. This is aluminum with a boron rod down the center that we're cutting right now. Here in a few minutes when our dash displaced when our dash displacement is completed, we're going to move on to our total sidewall removal. Currently, we're leaving our B-pillar in place, so we have something to push off of with our ram for our dash displacement. We're opening up the hole now in the lower A-pillar to create a good access point for the tip of our cutter blades. Larry's going to come in and make a perpendicular cut first. The reason he's doing this is because if he makes this cut first, when he takes that parallel to the vehicle cut, the tool won't run into the occupant. It'll actually peel out away from the vehicle. So that's a little trick that Larry's using to create good movement of that tool when he goes to make his second cut. Good, complete relief cuts are so important with any aluminum body structure vehicle that we're working on. in the lower A pillar is almost complete and if you've got a good view of that you can see the many layers of aluminum six or seven layers of aluminum that make up that lower A pillar Tesla Motors crash tests on this vehicle are phenomenal like their Model S their Model X and of course Model 3 is currently prototyped and they're looking at release cannons, they're seeing the same thing. Here we have the ram in place with the B pillar, and we're starting our dash, dash foot. The Model X is equipped with a dash bar. It runs from the lower A pillar on one side to the lower A pillar on the other side. Oftentimes, when we're doing our dash displacement, we need to move our ram into that dash bar. The guys have that option with this evolution. And you can see, with those great relief cuts, we get a lot of movement out of that dashboard. Now what's going to happen here is they're going to bring the spreaders in and they're going to hold that dash up, up and out of place so that we can remove the ram and create good access to our occupant. And this is a pretty good evolution. This works pretty well with all vehicles that we work on. If you've used the ram to move the dash, Get the spreader in there, take it the rest of the way, hold the dash at least out of the way so we can get our ram out, and now we've got really good access to our occupants in the vehicle. Okay, folks, the final step is the removal of the B-pillar. Again, dual phase 980, multiple layers of dual phase 980 steel with a boron rod running down the center. The guys are going to make that cut up high on the pillar, then they'll come down. And listen to the way this steel breaks. Look at the movement of the vehicle, and that'll give you an idea of how strong this material really is. As with any time we're cutting ultra high swing steel, we want to get the cutter sunk as deeply as possible on the material to get the most out of that tool. That's the sound of multiple layers of dual phase 980 steel and boron steel being cut. One of the strongest B pillars in the world. 
and that's the sound you're going to hear. It doesn't cut that material, does it? It breaks that material. The pressure builds up and breaks that material. Two cuts left. Larry's going to make a cut on the back side of that lower B pillar. Then he'll move to the front of the B pillar. Down here we don't have the bore on, but we have the dual face. Larry's going to move forward here in just a second and start that second cut to complete our total sidewall removal on the Tesla Model X. If you haven't looked at it, we've got a second Model X over here on the other side of the booth. We've also got a body structure on the other, on the other corner of the booth. Feel free to hang out, take a look at these, ask questions. Mike and Paul with Tesla Motors here to help you. The Hearst guys are here and I'll stick around as well. And there's that last piece of dual phase steel. That completes our evolution. Folks, thanks for coming out. We appreciate you. We appreciate you coming over and watching our instructional demonstration. Again, if you have any questions, please stick around. We're happy to answer them. Y'all take care and be safe.